Well, you found it. You found the most shameful episode of the season. We have a special version of shame this week for our producers, and we are answering all of your questions. Anything you have asked, nothing's off limits. Enjoy. This is Kyle Juszczyk from the San Francisco 49ers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. What, you pointed at something. Yeah, Josh Allen. Up right. on the wall. There he is. Look actually, at. it's a picture of Josh Allen. Yeah, it's not actually Josh. <laughs> he's, he's busy right he's now. He's got some things to do. We said, hey, we got a wall. Do you have some, You got a couple moments you can just be on the wall. And yeah, he he's said, flexing up there, and uh, we're getting ready for the NFL playoffs, Mike. I've heard. You wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, expect Brooks to not take care of this studio. With his kind of particular careful glances, mm. he makes sure that we've got we've got like Jalen Waddle over here. He's in the playoffs. We've got Josh Allen up on the wall in the playoffs. Yeah. Well, how do you explain the Mighty Ducks were in the playoffs? This. Yeah. There's a DeAndre Swift over by Mike because the Lions kept the Packers out of the playoffs. Oh, oh he's yeah, got but, his explanation. But what's he doing stinking up my corner over here? I, mean, I think you and him are kind of yoked together. This season, and you have to finish it out. You know what's funny? Is, <laughs> I thought it was over. I no, was, I was no, told the you, fantasy season was done. You're watching the playoffs with DeAndre Swift. Uh, what's funny is, as you said that, I looked at the rest of the table, and the first thing I saw was the helmet of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I was like, "Oh, okay. you didn't update." Oh, wait, yes, yeah, that's no, right. In. The, I just assume the Jaguars are not in the playoffs because they're the Jaguars. But congratulations, congratulations, <laughs> Jacksonville fans! You're you're in it. I I really liked. I I saw some supercut of Jags fans watching the game, and a T-shirt I had never seen before, and I never heard this before. Maybe it's it's common out there, but it was a uh, uh, remember the Titans suck. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when you're, if you're going to dunk on a team, that's a good one. When there are lots of Jacksonville fans in their stadium cheering them on, that's a good thing because that's not always been the case. And that, that game, when it got going, when it got to crunch yeah. time, that place was rocking. So that that's one of the more exciting games this week. I think we'd all agree that one could be – that could go either way. Yes. Yep. Uh, so we'll talk Super Bowl picks on today's show. We're going to make our picks. We've got some NFL news to talk about. We're doing a footballers AMA today, so we're answering all of your questions. I have Brooks, I've seen none of these yet. So they're all gonna be on the fly. I don't you know, do I need to prepare any sort of answers? Am I gonna embarrass myself? No. Yes. I mean maybe, but the, the <laughs> fan did a great job with their okay. submissions. And then keep it there on Deucer's Cam. Uh I I'm, oh, I'm not interested oh, in seeing your face, Brooks, but the other two gentlemen in our uh, producer booth mm. are going to be mercilessly shamed today. Mm -hmm. Shame. Because they lost the fantasy face-off, the final fantasy face-off of the year. And by they, I mean Kyle. And then Al just hitched his wagon to that that man over there. Al, like, you, you know, in, the, in Back to the Future, it's no one calls me chicken. Yes. Yeah. If you ever make a bet and you're like, hey, Al, I bet you that it doesn't matter yeah, he's what in. it is. He's, he's in. He just, he can't turn down a bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the... They'll get shamed. Fantasy face-off today, closing that out for the season. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We are on Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. We're on TikTok. Keep up with the talk, Mike. Oh, the yeah. The tick and the talk. That's right. Uh YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe, click the bell over there. And the communities that join the foot.com. If you want that extra show, right now we're down to two shows a week. As the season comes to a close, uh, you can get a third over there. The mailbag episode, the footcast at jointhefoot.com. So today's quick question, we'll get right into it. We were talking about the playoffs. Who is your Super Bowl pick? I find our three answers very telling because we all have a different yes. Super Bowl champion. 
Well, I don't know if that's ever happened on this show. I don't think it has. Never happened before where we all three have different champions. But what's ironic about that is that we all have the same side of the bracket winning. So we we don't even have the the other person's champion in the Super Bowl. I'll kick it off here because mine is right. Ah. And so if you're listening, you want to know who wins the Super Bowl, it is going to be the Buffalo Bills. They will beat the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl. It will be an excellent one. But the playoff experience that Josh Allen and the Bills have gained, getting a little bit further every single year, and then the the brutal, you know, rule changing heartbreak in in Kansas City. I, this is their year. The Bills will win it, and uh, I I stand by that, and I will be right. Well, at least you didn't equivocate there, uh, Mike. <laughs> who do you have winning the Super Bowl? I have the Philadelphia Eagles getting in there from the side of the NFC, but I have the Kansas City Chiefs as the winner. Patrick Mahomes will get his second. I think – so we all have AFC winners. Yeah, well, because the, the NFC is stinky, stinky doo-doo. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's certainly more experience on the AFC side compared to the teams that would be going in, right? So, so from the NFC, you would have Jalen Hurts, his first you know opportunity in the playoffs. Um, you know – if you see San Francisco getting there, which is who I take out of the NFC, it's oh. Bro it's going to be Brock Purdy, right? I, I my heart gets. I don't think like it's it's not crazy at all to say that the Forty ers can get into the playoffs as as a team. They're outstanding. There's, They've won ten straight games. They're extremely well rounded. But my heart, which still lies with with Trey Lance, I still choose to believe just with. I mean, like, I'm, I'm up against it. I have absolutely no proof at this point. I just have hope, and it floats. But if Brock Purdy is in the Super Bowl with a chance to win, I, I'm going to be in a full panic attack the whole time. Well, I, I'm taking San Francisco. I think they're going to be just too resilient, too difficult to move the ball on. I think the game plans going up against Philadelphia, uh, assuming that's the title game, which who knows. But that's what I'm going with out of the NFC, and then I – uh, just to piggyback your thoughts on the 49ers as your NFC pick, when I saw my answer in here, because we made brackets and uh, uh, Brooks put the, the answers in, um, I was supp I was like, wait, I didn't take the 49ers? I so was th really, close. really close, yes. But I am going with the team with the most recent Super Bowl experience from the AFC, the Cincinnati Bengals. I think they're playing the best football at the right time of year. Uh, they have that. A mix of weapons that I think will be very difficult to stop in the playoffs by any defense. Now, my rooting interest to start the year was with Buffalo. So, honestly, I'd love to see Buffalo win it. I don't have, like, it's not me saying I want Cincinnati to win it, but uh, it's who I think will come out of the AFC. So, we have Bengals, Bills, and Chiefs, uh, three heavyweights, only one spot in the Super Bowl. Yeah, Cincinnati's won eight consecutive games. Is that right? And then San Francisco, 10 consecutive, both playing their best football heading into the playoffs. Should be an interesting one. And if you want to join our NFL Playoff Challenge group, it's uh, completely free, just a fun thing we do for the playoffs. You can go to footclanchallenge.com. And uh, that's kind of a it's a, like a fun fantasy-style game where mm -hmm. you select a player at every position from teams. And you, know, you can even choose players from the bye week team. And every week they survive in the playoffs, you get a multiplier for their points. And uh, so it's part picking players and it's part picking teams that you think will move on. It's just a fun thing to do <laughs> in the fantasy. Is a car beeping? What's in going the NFL on? playoff. Is right. Gus Bus out there? <laughs> I was going to say. Well, because he's, he's not at practice. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, man. Mike, don't break news without this drop. Oh, please. News and notes from around the league. What Gus, were you, what Gus were you Edwards saying? not seen at practice. So no Gus Edwards. He's he's still dealing with concussion. No Tyler Huntley. Oh my gosh. No Lamar Jackson. <gasps> oh Baltimore. It's been reported he's facing an uphill battle. The, and like I'm not sure that this game isn't the biggest blowout of the weekend. It, it the, I think maybe even more than Buffalo, Miami. I'm not even. I mean, it's right in contention. And Baltimore fans, we as Arizona Cardinals fans, we know this pain as we have watched our what was a Super Bowl contending team, thirteen and three, get into the playoffs. Uh, 
have our second string quarterback kind of push us over the hump to get in there. And then our third string quarterback was the one who started the game. Who's I don't, that again? Uh, was it Lindley? Ryan Lindley. Was it Ryan Lindley? Was that who yeah. it was? Yeah. It was Which bad. Which he, he's actually, he works at Staples. So if you want to go. <laughs> Look, he, I mean, bless his, bless his heart. He did yeah. his best. It, it was, it was, oh man. So uh, Baltimore, Anthony good luck. Anthony Brown. <laughs> Anthony Brown uh, started this last week. It was it was a rough outing for him. He's more, got some like experience a, now. Like a frown. Oh. I mean, goodness gracious! He that does. Good when luck. You, when you're a third yes. string quarterback, you just really well, don't, this is don't the, belong in the playoffs. This is the time of year you want a player like Anthony Brown to kind of jump on the back of Deshaun Jackson and Sammy Watkins and get <laughs> you th across the finish <laughs> oh line. Oh my gosh! How are they? How are they this good though? It's, I, it's great coaching, great organization. Yeah, you've got a lot to overcome this week on the road. Yeah. Uh, Tua Tungavailoa ruled out. Yeah. So probably not seeing Tua again this year. <laughs> nope. Uh, Skylar Thompson's going to start. It's now the largest spread in wild card playoff history. Buffalo as the 13 point favorite. They're projected for like 28 points. I think Miami's at 15. So, Skylar, you've got uh, history that you can make in this game. And then we got a report. This one will be interesting to talk about for fantasy purposes because, you know, we've talked a little bit of dynasty fantasy football recently. Uh, Mike and Jason, they've brought up, you know, you can look to the future. You can look at situations where players are departing and who's the next man up. Uh, we, we have a report from the score, Jordan Schultz, saying that the Cardinals plan on trading DeAndre Hopkins. From an organizational standpoint, it's something we've talked about here. We're in Phoenix. We've kind of said they need to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're rebuilding, you've got Kyler coming back with the injury. You need draft capital. He's an older star wide receiver. But if DeAndre Hopkins leaves, you know, you're looking at a situation where Hollywood Brown is the leading man in Arizona. But, but you know, talk about the tight end situation. Talk sure. about uh, Rondale Moore if he can stay healthy. And the name I wanted to bring up was – uh, on my on my dynasty squad, because we're at the you know I'm starting to look at the rookie draft of how many spots do I have where it is a clear I can just drop this player because I don't see a path to to true relevance, and I got I got the Dorch just sitting on my squad, and a couple weeks ago it was well when the rookie draft rolls around or maybe a free agent or something pops up, Greg Dorch seems like one of my easier drops. Not anymore. Not anymore. He's, I believe he's a restricted free agent, and I think he played well enough now that if they do trade Hopkins successfully, Greg Dorch may, may be a starting wide receiver for the Cardinals next year. Yeah, and it also bumps up uh, Trey McBride. You've yes. got Zach Ertz had a pretty massive injury at the end of the year. Because it was so late in the year, you just go, oh, he's got, he'll miss the rest of the year, whatever, but... He might not be back in time, and and, and it was it was an ACL and MCL for Zach Ertz. Yeah, so that's for at his at his age, he's not going to have a fast, speedy recovery to get back on the field. With you know Trey McBride getting the opportunity, looking good at the end of the season. Mike Williams not seen practicing on Wednesday. Whoops. And the Jets are parting ways with their OC Mike Lafleur, according to league sources. Yes, uh, Manders also released Turner. Turner, right? Yeah. Yep. Do we, none of us remember his first name. Scott, Scott, Scott Turner. Turner. Okay. No, and, and Scott You're just shorthand. That, yeah. that's, that's good. And Did it you just, just go Scott Sterling? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. It'll be uh, interesting. It's to the offseason. It'll be interesting to see what Great happens. Scott. For Scott, uh, for Scott Turner. Because, like, I think he's okay. Uh, he was not working with a lot. Look, like Carson Wentz, great at getting people fired. Yeah. yeah that's true. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of his... It's one of his, his hat on currently it. one of his top traits. Is that on the back of the sports card for Carson Wentz yes. now? Yeah, Co coach is fired. Um, I did have a question before we close out the news and move on to right. the mailbag. If you were to like poll people around the office, simple question for fantasy footballers here: Would you say like who is in charge? Who of is the, he, of the of just the podcast? Of, of the I would say of the, us. Yeah, so like who gets final say on what happens? I mean, we kind of the, the three of us three vote of us. On I mean, things, we yeah. we take in, you know, we take We can do whatever we want. Yeah. So if I hit the the fantasy face-off button right now, 
that would be within my authority. Huh, like if I, we wanted to huh. punish them and then make them make sure, it, maybe but last a little longer. One rule that we definitely could not change was once you're shamed, you can't. Like once you put on the outfit, you're shamed for the the rest of the show. Right, right. That's that's for above sure. us. Yes, that's, I, that's, I can't, yeah, that's I can't at the top. That. <laughs> that's chiseled in stone. <laughs> yeah. So just don't hit the button. Don't accidentally hit that. Oh no. <laughs> Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. Oh, man. The, cup, the slack is blowing up. Oh, so we've yeah. got, we're uh, being called some things. <laughs> we're being called some things. Uh, let's, let's slide over to Deuce's Alley. Let's get some live reaction to the news that you will be spinning the wheel of shame right here, right now. Now, we still have a nice big mailbag section to go on yeah. the show. Uh, Sorry, guys. It's out of our control now. Kyle, how you feeling? We decided that we're just going to wear our shame proudly, uh-huh, so we feel uh-huh. good about this going okay, in. So yeah. del- delusion. Mm. Uh, how are you doing over there, Al? <laughs> less pr- <laughs> less proud than Kyle. But less proud. I'm, I'm than ready. Kyle. Let's go. All right, let's spin that wheel. Wheel of shame. There so, it is. Kyle's going to spin the wheel, and both Al and oh, Kyle. Mighty Ducks. We're doing Mighty Ducks, right? Just keep it It, has, it has its fun. Okay. The wheel is spinning. We had Mighty Ducks, Pirates, uh, Spartans. Oh, Deucer what? cosplay. What is cosplay? that? What could that possibly be? Let's find that, out. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> So if for those of you listening and we'll we'll take this time as they get their outfits on, uh their shameful. Oh wait, outfits. so they're dressing up as each other. Oh, oh how cute. So Kyle is an oh. owl. Kyle and is an owl. Oh owl. <laughs> owl got it the worst. Owl. Yeah. <laughs> Ky- Kyle's is really nice. Owl's is not nice. Owl's is my face a- on straight. <laughs> owl's a demigorgon. Oh man, I didn't realize this is what was happening. I so was suffocation is now in the cards. Brooks, if I fall over. <laughs> oh, man. You sound great. You sound great, Al. Uh, Thank you. Oh, that sounded pretty good. Yeah, that's not too bad. So I, uh, you guys look good, by the way. Very good. Kyle's ready to go to like one of those I, costume parties. I will not be able to help. Neither of us will be able to help this episode. No, that's no, fine. no. Yeah. That's fine. It's off season. Um, but you can you could help out with a Kubrick movie over there. <laughs> that's that's oh. right. eyes wide shame. Um. So we've got we've got the draft the final DraftKings segment. If I see a mask off, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, for sure. If this camera goes away, those masks stay on. We and all through the show, you need randomly to be going back to Deucer's uh, Alley. Oh, I I already gave Brooks that I- information. I said you got to go back over there. I need a snorkel. <laughs> That's yeah. You're in trouble. So this is our final segment. So to to wrap oh, up man. this awesome year of DraftKings, we wanted to take a look back since we won't be here next week to talk about lineups for this coming week. We are going to look at how the season went. He's turning who's on the, the air conditioning. Winner, who's the loser? <laughs> um, and, you know, I think when it comes to this data, some of this won't be very surprising. The most losses <laughs> on the year was Andy. What? Yes, Andy, you had... Double digit losses, oh, which is, is impressive. Uh, they had ten. You had ten of them. Uh, Mike, wow. four losses. I had okay. three losses. So we we had a if we combined, yeah, we almost got there. <laughs> which um, is what everyone at home knew already. So yes. thank you for that information. Yes, uh, I just want. I mean, this is the wheel of shame. So uh, I'll be back next year in in great form. I believe it. Um, I I think I came out a huge winner in the fact that I only was shamed three times. But the big winner, if you look at just who came in first, Mike, you had double digit victories. Oh baby! Ten first place finishes. Congratulations! Thank I declare you. you this year's DraftKings winner. Love it. All right, uh, you guys look good over there in yeah, Deuce Valley. Also check. for okay. for good. this weekend. Um, we've got a couple DFS things going on that are pretty special. You can go to ballersdfs.com. That's just where you can always join our league and see what little our, our weekly DraftKings contest. Absolutely, see what contests we're hosting there and get into some DraftKings contests with us. And 
we have the DFS pass right now that we have opened up. It is completely free through the playoffs. So if you've never used it, wanted to see what's in it, it was so great this year. I mean, we we had so much feedback as far as the the picks, the tools, the optimizers, some of the uh, the little prop bets. A lot of great stuff in there. You can go to DFSPass.com and register for free. Yeah, and it's going throughout the entire NFL playoffs. Yep. All right, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. One last time. You can download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. What's that promo code? Ballers. Ballers. You get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's the code BALLERS. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Well, well, well. Oh, Jason. Breaking news. The Arizona Cardinals have received <gasps> permission permission yes! to speak with Saints coach Sean Payton. Fantastic. That's I at know, least step one. Look, I know that Sean Payton will not end up here. He has too much control and say and wants a really healthy organization, so... Sorry, uh, but I do love the fact that we are at least, uh, you know, trying, going after him. Uh, <laughs> you got to try. You'll, will you feel better when we don't hire him that we at least interviewed him? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, into the mailbag we go. Mailbag. Mailbag. And by the way. Ask me. The two very shameful oh, man, looking good. producers. <laughs> so I could have made you both do the mailbag right there. It crossed my mind, and I didn't. That's how much I love you guys. Yeah, we care. Now also, put on your little suffocating mask <laughs> and do your job. Owl, I really hope you learned a lesson that if you want to hitch your wagon, you hitch it to the ballers official. The you know We, we knew we were going to take them down. But then I would have lost the first time I hitched my wagon. Because Kyle beat you the first that's time. That's true. That is, that is ah, true. Ah, incorrect. Kyle beat me. <laughs> <laughs> that was the mistake. All right. We are into the mailbag, and um, it's going to be fun. We, we have a lot of questions that were submitted on social media. Uh, Brooks has compiled them. I have seen none of them, but I guess we also have a voicemail. If you have a question for the show in general, you can go to the website, click the Submit a Question button. The fantasyfootballers.com. You can dial the voicemail hotline 302 464 TFFB. Uh, let's jump into that voicemail. Hey, this is Sam. I love you guys' show. I have a question for you. If it was to be fully grown out, who has the best beard in the group? Thanks, guys. All right. That well, is an if, easy. If grown out, the best beard. Yeah, I mean, it's not me. No, for that's, sure. That's, what's funny is I think all three of us would say, not us. Like, yeah, but it is Mike. Yeah, it's well, Mike. I, I just because I you we, you can see it right now. Like my beard is grown out, but my and like I'm, I'm proud of my beard. It's 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 a good beard, but it has it has deficiencies, has yes. weaknesses. It, yeah, if if we're if we're extending, it might be owl. Owl can grow a pretty. Let's take nice a look at his beard. beard here. Oh, that looks really nice. Well, now is that before or after he visits the barber to get it touched <laughs> up? <laughs> Probably before. <laughs> Well, today's but, turned into a very interesting day for Bor Borgannoni. What I mean, you got a strong beard back there. I, no. I liked when my hair was grown out, but not the beard game. Okay, all right. I don't know who what he here's, his beard here's looks thing, like. Here's the thing about beards, fellas. Just go for it. I just my problem is I've tried to grow it out further. I keep it like kind of low, right? right? But if I try to go, I grow too much down in the Amish. Region, yeah. The well, neck. that's uh, usually the the chin is the stronger part of the, and it just grows so thick there, and it's so spotty in the upper cheek. That's uh, I feel like mine's that way too, but eventually you yeah. just, you just it, power through. You power through it. I've yeah. never pushed through far enough. <laughs> um, all right, this question comes in from Twitter from Dynasty Doofus. Okay, uh, which one of you has the biggest potty mouth on the show? <laughs> well, on the show, none of us. We keep yeah. it okay squeaky from clean. the show. I, I think we're. I I don't think any of us have a a significant potty mouth. I would say on the pickleball court, yeah. maybe me. Yeah. Uh, well, at, a, at a Suns game, you definitely gonna Mike. You were going to change yeah, the yeah, pickleball yeah. court? <laughs> Look, if we're at a sporting event, Mike. it is definitely me. <laughs> Mike in the NBA Finals. <laughs> oh, man. He channeled like seven years worth of profanity that I'd never heard from his mouth into one quarter. Yeah. Um, uh, you, weren't, you weren't going with Jason? No, I would say me. <laughs> 
I think we all have our pickleball moments. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a matter of how it's, how how it's going. It's kind of like it's the, never celebration. You it's kind of like the Vegas thing, right? Like what happens in Vegas stays right. in Vegas. What is said on the pickleball court right. stays on the pickleball court. Yeah, that's why is we the sound isolation in there. Yeah, no one no one saw here. Um, Instagram question from Scott says, "What music did you guys listen to as high schoolers?" Oh, go ahead, Jay. High schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't gonna let that go. I mean, the like, fact that it was the word high schoolers, like, not even no joking. Yesterday, my my middle son asked me, "Has has your voice ever cracked while you're talking on the podcast?" It's like, of course it has, because yeah. everyone's voice, it, it, they just your voice cracks all the time. I told Al I was losing my voice earlier today. I just didn't know it would be on the word high schoolers. High schoolers. <laughs> Um, for what me, music did you listen for to? me i had two groups of music and that was all i listened to nothing else it was either the uh like 90s alternative grunge rock type of music or it was hardcore gangster rap that was <laughs> that that was it that's all i listened to how are we doing al are you all right i see you struggling over there like is this a medical situation because i don't want to be like live streaming an issue i'm doing all right yeah excellent all right i don't know he's a professional he would never tell us he'll power through um that looks like a real small mask for your size <laughs> head i'm gonna be honest yeah so uh i would say uh, alternative uh, was pretty much the what i listened to in like junior high high school bush bands like that uh, a lot of punk rock and a lot of indie rock all right, Instagram question from Aaron Crawford. What happens in the office when podcasts aren't being recorded? Oh, nothing. Are there moments <laughs> when we should close it down? Is that to say, are there moments <laughs> when we're not recording something? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes we are uh, obviously prepping for a show, doing all, all of our in season. We are uh, nonstop packed with you know rankings and doing all the work that we do behind the scenes to make the show uh, effective and efficient. In the off season, we have more time to, you know, we work on the app, develop those type of things. UDK. Yep. The, we play some foosball from time to time. We got too good at that. Like, that's yeah. we just kind of leveled up and out of it. We kind of were just in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. We yeah. beat the game. We beat the <laughs> game. And, you know, the replayability is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we've kind of taken a break from that now that pickleball's taken over. Uh, quick break. Back with some more questions. Um, this one comes in from Jeremy. It says, when will this show be over? <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick 87 more minutes. No, this one comes from Tommy. He says, is there a reason Jason never gets the host when Andy's out? Is there a reason? No. The, the Jason has never asked to host. Don't need to. Don't yeah, desire to. The, the reason I, some foot, foot casts. I jump over to, to host is when the, when the show first started, Long, long ago when uh, the only people that listened to it were uh, my parents and Andy's parents. Right. Because well, we just were... my dad. My mom said no. Yeah. No, I, no when I say parents, I, I also mean not my parents. I mean, uh, Andy's father was our only listener right, at the time. Right. Uh, I, we, we didn't know what the format of the show should be. I had a little bit more microphone experience, so I started as the host. And Andy uh, did what I do now as the you – know, what I guess the color analyst I don't know what get to, picks wrong bad yeah, takes stuff yeah, like that you know lose DFS contests Dang on a it. weekly basis uh so I just I had done it before and it was the Andy was at the beginning of the show Andy was the Iron Man like his streak before he finally missed a show was a very very long time and we never even considered it and it was oh crap Andy's gonna miss the show what do we do and it was well I've hosted before so I guess I'm going to do it and then that's just the, what we went with. What's funny is, uh, you know, one of the things when I first entered, so if, if you don't know the the origin story, um, before we like officially launched for a full season, you guys had a couple of weeks doing the show prior to my involvement at all mm -hmm. at finishing out uh, one of the seasons. We call the those NFL. the golden years of the, <laughs> right. of the podcast. Yes. Um, and when I came on board, when, you know, when it, the off season hit and I was coming on, I genuinely thought, that I was going to be the host, not because we ever discussed that, but I figured you two, you know, let, you guys would just have me 
come in and and host, bring some levity, and you guys would do what you were doing. And it just didn't work out that way. And I don't give two farts. <laughs> it does, I don't. Uh, I don't think I could do as good a job as Andy, though. I think you're a world class host, and you're perfect for the role. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank Appreciate you. That that's nice of you to say. I think you would do worse than Andy and worse than me. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you, mine. It means a lot coming from you. Uh, Jason did host the DFS podcast one time this year. Is that true? And you hit on a big bet that week. I think it was the Kamara TD bet. Like multi two. multi yeah. TDs. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> You okay? <laughs> oh man, he's, he's just—he's just shaking his head. <laughs> on, honestly, honestly, Jeremy, you look really stupid. You look—you so look dumb. as dumb as you feel. You look—I feel great. Oh man. Now, okay. what what material is that mask? Is that pure cloth? Because I hope it is. Oh no, this is rubber, man. <laughs> oh no, that's rubber. What's in the middle, though? Isn't that cloth? There's a mesh. mesh. Yeah, there's a little bit of mesh, but it's uh, it's where my eyes are, not where my breathing holes are. (laughs) How does it smell? How does it smell? Yeah, what's the aroma in there? It smells like me. Oh, (laughs) no. There's a lot of me in here. I thought it was going to smell bad like plastic. I didn't realize it was going to smell that bad. Oh, man. Um, All right, here's a a good question. Uh, Adam wants to know our favorite sports movie of all time, which... Ironically, you you did talk about the shirt that talked about Remember oh. the Titans, which was one of my favorite sports movies growing up for sure. Remember the Titans is up there. My uh, my favorite sports movie. I like the funny ones far more than the uh, the emotional, uh, uplifting ones, and I think it's Rookie of the Year. Oh, dude, what a good answer. That's not mine. Um, but I do love that, and it's from the t- same kind of time period. Where are those movies? Where are the kids getting the superpowers and beating the adults at the sports? We need yeah, to bring that back. That 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 certainly needs to come back. I no, was gonna it's go just with, Doc McStuffins now. <laughs> I'm going to go with The Sandlot. So s- okay, similar excellent. time period. The, Is the, Jerry Maguire a sports movie? Is that an answer <sighs> that you can set? If it is, and, and you know, I... I think it is to some degree, like the same way that you can make the Die Hard as a Christmas movie argument. Jerry Maguire, he's a sports agent dealing with sports stars. There's football and it's up. I mean, it would be up there. Then I think Field of Dreams is my answer, though. Okay, Field of Dreams, uh, The Natural. Anybody over there seen The Natural before? I'm sure. Nope. Kyle, I'm sure Kyle's seen The Natural. Oh, for sure. A Robert Redford. Yeah, buddy. That's a good movie. And of I, course, everybody the water wants Waterboy. Every, oh yeah, Waterboy is very so good. So you guys go for the comedy. Yes. And I want the the like my favorite part of those movies is the winning the game moment. You want the goosebumps. It's the not, you know, the the Rudy. Yeah, Rudy's a good one. The the walk off home run, that moment. Okay. Cuz I, you know, we all wanted to be that person. Sure. Bases loaded. I wanted to be rookie of the year. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted <laughs> That's to be, true though. That that some part of you believe that could happen after yes. you watch oh, that movie. It, oh, it definitely did. Where you're like, as a kid, your risk meter kind of went up a little bit. Of, well, I'm willing to do this. I could probably get hurt, but <laughs> if I get hurt, what happens if I get a cannon for an arm? Yeah, I mean, I go straight to the pros. Now, what what happened in the movie? He broke his arm, and then he was in a cast. And when he got out of the cast, he had super yeah his, pitching. The, yeah, the the ligaments were extra tight. I don't know. And then obviously, yeah, Mighty Ducks. I mean, come on. Mighty Ducks is great. It's no fine. contest. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, um, really? You only think it's fine? Or I, 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 that I'm only poker? saying that to, because I know that if you ever say Mighty Ducks is fine, Kyle dies a little bit inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> Instagram question from Paul. Do you have any pets? Uh, we have a golden doodle named Copper. We have He's a rascal. Two golden doodles. Ooh. And yeah, double, <laughs> double how good you are. Double the, po- uh, double the poop. Rocky sugar and then a little toy poodle named Pepper. And I have two Bernadoodles. I have Daisy and Rufus. And Rufus is a tank. Mike, how many cats you got? Oh, child, please. Andy, any cats? Uh, no. Okay, me no cats. Yeah, we do have some cat people in this office, which Shh. we... Yeah, I mean, what's that? They're a different breed. We're working through it. They were raised differently. Yeah. Different morals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. All right, uh, let's go here with... Instagram, Dan wants to know, keep trade cut. Okay. All right. Mozzarella sticks, Ooh. waffle fries, oh. fried pickles. Mm. Easy. 
<laughs> fried, fr- fried pickles gets the cut, and I'm sure we're yes. all going to say that. The problem with fried pickles is not that they don't taste good. The problem is, is they are not consumable in the vast quantity that the other two are. I will eat a couple fried pickles, but I don't want 50 fried pickles. No, no one does. I love pickles, and I love fried pickles. The problem I thought you were going to go with with fried pickles is when you bite into a fried pickle, it has murdered your face with heat. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, when whatever they do when they fry a pickle, it makes it molten lava inside. It's the hottest. It's probably when they drop it in the boiling oil. Well, they do it with potatoes and French fries. They don't just stay. Unbe- Saying there's a temperature issue. Yes, there's a massive temperature issue. And mozzarella sticks. Is that your answer? I. This is a really difficult one. I'm I'm keeping the waffle fries, trading the mozz sticks, and cutting the. Now, fried are you pickles. doing that based off of just? enjoyment yes. or not like because i feel like the ramifications of eating too many mozzarella sticks oh, is yeah. worse than the waffle fries and we have reached the ramification ages yes yeah there is pain involved but like speaking of pain <laughs> <laughs> how you doing now doing good all right good good the, like hey, it, are you texting a final goodbye to your <laughs> wife is that what was going on that's right <laughs> if oh, you man. can get a truly top tier mozzarella stick versus the top tier of waffle fries. The, the Mott sticks. Do I get some ranch with the fries? Oh, if, with with the, either. But. Yeah, with the Mott sticks, you get ranch and marinara. You get both. Yes, absolutely. Because okay. we're sophisticated. I think I think at the end of the day, with no ramifications considered, I'm, I'm going, taking the Mott sticks. sticks. I'm taking the Mott sticks. Yeah. But not, I mean, I'll trade the waffle fries for a haul. Multiple firsts. And I'm going to keep some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you the whole thing. Instagram question from Jake. Wants to know how did we all meet, which is uh, a question we get from time to time. Definitely every time we do an AMA type of show, but uh, we go way back. I mean, I am, I'll I'll tell you, I'm 38 years old. Mike is 39 and Jason is more than that by one. Um, uh, For Jason, to help Jason out, I'm 39 for like under two months. Yeah. There you go. Welcome to my club. Yeah. Loser. I'm, I'm, say, I'm. I'm Jay- barreling down. Jason and I met in high school. Jason's a couple years older than me. I'm in the 30s, and he's old. Not. <laughs> <laughs> but we met in a, uh, a freshman Spanish class. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was the freshman. <laughs> right. <laughs> in the class. I was the junior taking <laughs> freshman Spanish because I had put it off yeah. for as yeah. long as I could. Which was so fun because, you know, every freshman, this is, you know, first semester freshman year, you're nervous as heck. Like every freshman is little and scared and they don't know what high school's like. And here's Jason, who was like king of town, who was already the comedian, who was already the theater guy, the comedy guy, the improv guy. And there's a bunch of freshmen in there and this one doofus that's just making everybody <laughs> laugh. That was my class. And it, yeah, he just took it over. And we actually started playing fantasy basketball together. He took advantage of me in some trades. Oh, yeah. Was that uh, Rick Smith? One including Rick Smith and Sean Marion, as I oh, learned man. fantasy basketball. The Matrix guess was undefeated who, for fantasy. Guess who received Sean Marion? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm the guy who traded for Rick Smith. Yeah. And so we, we met in high school. Uh, after high school, Jason had a business doing uh, – basically it was uh, – first it was in MySpace, then it was in uh, Facebook gaming and iOS gaming. And uh, just through, I don't know, happenstance, we ended up reconnecting over MySpace, I believe. Yeah. I just sent you a note saying, how you doing? Did you get to that like, college? Yeah, and then that's how you college? let people know how old you are. Right, that we we were Our story includes reconnecting MySpace. on MySpace. Yeah. Well, that was that was the company that um, I ran at, at that time, and then Andy came on board. Yep. We grew it to uh, very nice proportions and shifted with social media over to uh, eventually facebook gaming and when we were making uh video games we needed an audio engineer someone that could make incredible music and i needed a job and, <laughs> <laughs> and mike needed a job i think was i giving a speech at you a, were you were you was at the uh, igda meeting and you were the the head honcho you were the presenter which means that you had already made something of your life and you mike gave, hadn't no you gave no me, i was fresh out of college you gave me some uh some sweet music on a CD-ROM, and I, <laughs> I, I listened. I listened to that on, on and, your CD player. Yes, and I uh, I knew right then. I was like, "We've got to get He's this the guy, guy 
for to the, give a job to for the new game we're making, <laughs> and uh, then we all work together for the better part of a decade of running that business. Yeah, it's actually funny. We do, I just texted Jason this morning that I think I hit a longer time here with the footballers than when we did the video games, but um, we played a lot of fantasy football and spent a lot of time on fantasy football at that other job. And that was history. We started it up, and, mm -hmm. and here we are doing this. Uh, okay, let's go here. A Twitter question from – well, Instagram question from Alex. Do you guys collect sports cards? Nope. No. D I did as a kid as – I mean, what, that had to be an overwhelming majority of kids I was, had cards. It was my single biggest hobby growing up. It was by far my favorite thing to do. Buying packs, going to it seemed like cards were like somehow more prevalent back then, which I know they're huge now, but like it was people would sell them yeah, out of their of garage, bad. like garage sales with boxes of cards and card sales, and I'd go to card auctions and collect Jason Kidd cards and Grant Hill, and <laughs> just let's just date ourselves as often quick. as we can. Uh, and as you were saying this, this were like we're not getting into uh, but NFTs, right? We're not good, bad, whatever, but. And what are they overvalued or or what? Let's go to that camera again. We're just gonna check the deducers roll. Well, he's starting to take a drink. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's taking a drink. <laughs> are you through the mess? Through the mess? He's thirsty, yeah. but he knows okay. he can't take that mess off, uh, or he gets fired. Yeah, I need a job. <laughs> for so for all the people out there who are, you know, like against saying that well, the NFTs are worth absolutely nothing. When we were little, you know who was telling us that our baseball cards were going to pay for our future and our college educations, the adults. That's who was telling us to spend all of our money on those things. That's Be funny to think about. This is this is it. This is your future in this binder. Keep them safe. Keep those corners sharp because that car is going to be worth a ton of money. And they weren't. Not most of them. Um, that's funny to think about, though. Yeah, I, I, have, I tried to get back into it a little bit. Like, I got some... Uh, I think I think last year and during the playoffs I was buying I bought up some Joe Burrow rookies and stuff like that, um, but it's hard. It's it's not as fun when you're a kid. You're you're scraping and crawling for like a few bucks to that's, buy one pack, and that's then that what pack, made it fun. That pack is so valuable. It's a different collecting experience when you're an adult. Um, you just trying buy, to you just buy all the cards. Trying to tell your wife what you're buying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Instagram question from Daniel wants to know our favorite genre of food. Genre of I've never heard food referred yeah. to as is genre. that like, as in like saying the, like Italian or, yes. or Mexican food or because mine's American <laughs> yeah you, because burgers fries sure. mac and cheese those are my three food groups yeah I mean pizza that, I mean that's is, yeah, is yeah pizza, you're saying American American pizza, pizza. sure um I I'll go Japanese I love Japanese. sushi yeah. sushi is my favorite food my favorite dinner. Um, you can go healthy, you could go delicious, and then I love the <laughs> those, appetizers those as well. There's no overlap. No, there really isn't in <laughs> life. There is no overlap between actually healthy and actually delicious. Uh, mine is Mexican food. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, like, all of it? Like, uh, oh, enchiladas and oh, tostadas yeah. oh, and brother. burritos? Yes. And, okay. All of it. I wasn't sure if that was allowed to be like if you grow up in Arizona, you, there's a lot of authentic Mexican food yeah. all around us. Mm -hmm. So when people when people travel here, they'll ask for like where's the best Mexican food restaurant because they don't have maybe as much right. authentic Mexican food. But I wasn't sure if it was one of those things where like people also travel here and like buy up a bunch of southwestern decor, but we grew up with all that right. and we despise no. it. No, I mean, I, but you've never food, abandoned it. Like real Mexican food. The, the fake Americanized Mexican food is salt delicious. Uh, Taco Bell. Delicious. <laughs> That's true. CJ Osbeck wants to know, have you ever thought about branching out into other fantasy sports or maybe just making Borg and Betts do it? It's we, it, it has been considered, and then we went, nah, man. <laughs> reconsidered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, in, and in then the reconsidered. In the very beginning, we, we questioned, because, you know, like Andy said, uh, we – started out playing fantasy basketball that was the beginning of our relationship we all three love basketball uh love the nba and so we we did think about it but we wanted to stay sharp and not dilute what we're doing and f be able to have focus and grow the fantasy football to the to be the best most accurate entity we could yeah yeah you're right and you can only do so much 
well, and we knew what it would take to make this show what it has become and what it, we want it to be moving forward. So, yeah, there is always the possibility that we, we would branch out with maybe other talent mm -hmm. doing that. Um, not not impossible to see that happening, but... But if you're talking like Borg and Betts, we still have to find talent that can do it. Right. We're looking. So uh, if you're out there, let us know. Oh, also, yeah, that's what you want to say. Speaking <laughs> no. Yeah, welcome to uh, email overload. Also, uh, speaking of Borg, I'm really like, you have it so e We're going to the deucers cam and talk about how bad yeah, Al Borland has it. And he looks like an owl. But I look just, good. It's yeah. just a no, mask. I get it. I get it. I look good. You have a comfy sleep mask on. Like that's <laughs> that's all you're doing. You're you're just chilling there. And now because of the mask, you can't really help with anything on the show. We can't throw to you for much. So you are just literally front row watching the fancy footballers with a comfy owl mask on. And Al is wearing a, a Borgogan mask, and it's less comfortable <laughs> because of the the mesh and the suffocation. And the size. I can't get past how small it looks. Yeah, that's not for a grown man. No. Either that or you've got a huge head. Maybe a little of both. Yep. Um, all right. I think that's going to wrap it up. We wanted to have some fun doing AMA today as the season winds down. Give you those Super Bowl picks. And we will be bringing you another episode on Tuesday. And that episode will have the footy award winners. Oh! Will, will it not, Brooks? We oh, will have. Will. We will have final winners. And there were a lot of really close categories, so that will be a lot of fun. Footy Award winners will have the – yeah, and go vote. What's the what's the URL there, Brooksy? It's footyawards.com. Yeah, that seems easy enough. It's spelled F -O -O -T. O -T. <laughs> Just trying to make this as long as uh, possible for Al. It is an I-E, not a Y. <laughs> yeah, footyawards.com. Vote before Monday, and we'll have the NFL playoffs to talk about on Tuesday as well. After we said all those things, watch, you know, Baltimore win by three touchdowns and then hey. Miami goes on to take out Buffalo. And NFL can be crazy sometimes. Enjoy the games and we'll see you next week, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.